Hey, it's Mike here, and today a case that seems ridiculous and rare, but isn't all that uncommon throughout the world, even though we don't talk about it that much. We're talking about a very recent case study just released by a neurosurgeon like 24 hours ago about a 28 year old man whose brain was essentially riddled with these holes on their brain scan. I could tell you the answer right away, but I think some of you might have fun guessing when I give you more information. And this is something that is preventable and does have some sort of large society implications of how we could fix it and prevent it. And yeah, it is pretty gross, but I will not be showing graphic footage. I'll try to keep things as ungross as possible. Let's go. Now you might be thinking, is that Lyme disease that has advanced to a neurological state? Because yeah, there can be sort of spot-like lesions on the brain in advanced Lyme disease, but there's just so many and they're bigger than say these dots right here. So we could cross that off the list and let's get to some more information so you can guess. All right, first hint, there is no vaccine for this disease. Second hint, it is foodborne. It can also spread from human to human, but originally foodborne. And another point, the patient here was originally from Latin America, but this was a case that was discovered in the US after they had been there for a while. And also this disease causes about 30% of epilepsy cases globally, which is actually quite shocking to me. And final hint, uh, it's much less likely that a vegan will get this disease just because of, you guessed it, what they eat, because this is a pork worm. <laughs> More specifically, neurocystocercosis caused by pork tapeworm or tania solium. This demon looking thing straight from the upside down. And it is the FAO's number one foodborne parasite in terms of global health impact, which is insane that we don't talk about it more. Growing up, I always thought that tapeworms would be limited to your digestive system. And some of them aren't gonna be making it into your brain like the ones in cow flesh, AKA beef, but this one, it can make it into the brain. And these images are from a post by neurosurgeon, Dr. Betsy Frunch, who posted this like 24 hours ago. And here she is talking about the subject. Here's a brief explanation. You first have the pork tapeworm named Tinea solium. Then a human eats undercooked or raw pork and gets the tapeworm in their intestines. That person then passes these tapeworms in their feces. If they don't wash their hands properly, the eggs can get on their hands and then they contaminate food that can be ingested by another person. Wait, are these up to 25 foot long worms actually getting into your brain? No, it's important to mention that the eggs and babies are the most destructive and dangerous here. The baby tapeworms hatch and then they burrow through your intestine walls and then they get into your bloodstream where they can sort of travel like a highway anywhere in your body almost, you know, such as your muscles, your liver, your brain, and even testicles like this poor 18 year old who passed away a few years back. Now, your body then forms little cysts around the larva. And that explains how the worms get into the pig muscle to start with. When this person eats the eggs, then they form into larvae within the body and can go to the brain. Then you get brain worms. And yes, from this paper in particular, quote, when humans consume pork containing T. soleus cyst, the cystocircus develops into a mature tapeworm in the human intestine, shedding eggs that are expelled in human feces. And no, cystocircus is not two twin sister acrobats. It's just a larval tapeworm, ew. Not as fun, but how common is this? Well, when we're talking about the actual, you know, nervous system infection here, it is the most common parasitic disease of the central nervous system in humans, affecting between two and a half and 8.3 million people annually, accounting for a global burden of 2.8 million disability adjusted life years. And so that's not even counting people who would just have this digestively or whatever. This is ones that have actually gotten into the central nervous system. Millions, we're talking pretty much on par with global measles cases that are about 9 million estimated. And this 2021 study has more prevalence data talking about how antibody prevalence, meaning exposed people, ranges from about two to 30% in Latin America, 12 to 19% in Asia, and from about seven to 35% in Africa. 
Crazy thing is that this could take years to develop with this thing just living inside of you for years. So let's just try to keep the health anxiety down here. Very, it's very likely that you do not have this person watching. <laughs> and this is from undercooked or even raw pork, AKA pig bodies. And you might be thinking, who is eating that? Well, more people than we would like to think. First of all, you have this whole raw meat movement that is happening, which is ridiculous. So we're probably gonna see more of that in those people. And then also there are just traditional dishes around the world. Like we have a raw pork dish from Germany called Met and then also a Vietnamese raw pork dish called Gio or Gio Song, which, you know, might be put in a bon mi if someone gets a pork bon mi. And from this paper, yeah, you could probably detect this through a visual meat inspection by cutting it up and all that stuff. However, that has low sensitivity, meaning they're unlikely to find them because these cysts can be missed. Sister from another mister, and that mister is a tapeworm. Dr. Frunch continues with some more interesting info. It's the leading cause of adult onset epilepsy worldwide. And to elaborate or look more into the whole epilepsy issue, yes, from this study, about 30% of people with epilepsy have neurocystis sarcosis, which is honestly quite ridiculous and more people should be aware of. And that brings me to a case study which sort of describes how this can occur. It's this one in the New England Journal of Medicine and it was highlighted in detail in this Live Science article, which also just demonstrates how amazing the human brain is at still functioning and working because this 38 year old who had been living in Boston for 20 years, originally from Latin America, had developed some symptoms, some speech issues and some epileptic seizures. Turns out he had a dang dead tapeworm inside of his brain that had calcified over time and that's what happens with either these cysts or the worm itself. Your body, your brain actually covers it in calcium, which is also what can happen with old breast implants. If you've ever seen that, they're like, it's, we don't need to go into that. And Dr. Frunch has some more good points. Here she is. The time interval from getting the infection to developing symptoms within the brain can be anywhere from one to 30 years. First stage, you can actually have active parasites within the brain. In four to five years with no treatment or in the early stages of treatment, the membrane surrounding the cyst can become leaky and you can actually get swelling around the cyst and this can cause neurological deficits. In disseminated cases like the case I presented, you can see all of these larvae within the brain that have involuted over time. But the body is incredible. However, there can be some inflammation along this process, which could you know, put pressure on different parts of your brain. I don't know how something just being in your brain alone wouldn't cause more issues, but that pressure and inflammation can cause those symptoms, speech and epilepsy. And thankfully this guy was just given anti-inflammatory medication as, as well as anti-parasitic medication. However, that thing had been dead for about a decade, they think. So I don't know if that would help or not, but it turns out He's doing just fine now, and that lesion had actually shrunk last time they looked at it. So yeah, quote, the good news is he continues to do well and be seizure free. So it doesn't have to be something that lasts an entire lifetime, unfortunately, like some other epileptic uh, causes that might not be as treatable. Most cases of neurocystic sarcosis do not need surgery, but sometimes we do need to take a biopsy to make the diagnosis, and sometimes a patient needs shunting if they develop hydrocephalus. That means that these larvae can actually obstruct the fluid flow within the brain. But let's go on to just the global prevalence of this as well, because there are some lessons here. We have this global map from the WHO, and you can see that it's endemic to pretty much all of these tropical areas. Perhaps it's just survivability, but this might lead you to think you're in a country that is safe. But as the NHS, which is the UK's health service says, in the context of a country where it isn't endemic, these infections are usually caught while traveling. So a lot of people might go down to the tropics for a little vacation in the winter and bring back an extra passenger. And this brings me to vegans. Well, vegans are gonna have a way lower risk, I think, of getting it just because they're not gonna be eating some potentially undercooked pork and might be a little bit less likely to eat in places where they're preparing it as well. However, because it's starting in that pig and then going to humans where they can then spread it through their feces, then you can get it 
on plant foods like raw fruits and vegetables, which is just so frustrating. But that's the big point here is because we've decided to farm all of these animals, we can just add to this ever growing list of zoonotic diseases, ones that haven't even existed yet. I mean, COVID wasn't an issue until a few years ago, and you've seen my videos on that perhaps, and how it was likely from that wild animal market where people were eating meat. These were meat animals that had jumped to humans from. I have all of the details on that in a video I'll link below. But because we've decided to eat these animals known as pigs who are super intelligent, then we have the issue of of their tapeworms crossing over into us, in which case they can go into our brain and cause a lot of gross disturbing issues that we don't need to dwell too long on. But obviously shifting to a more plant-based diet or obviously a another earth that would be vegan would have a lower risk of this or hopefully completely eliminate this. And it's editing mic here later. I couldn't help but wonder why is it the pork worms that are doing this, because there's also cow ones and other worms that don't get into your brain. And I have a theory similarly to how the flu developed into a lethal virus from a harmless virus that would just want to go from pond to pond in waterfowl. But then as we started farming these animals closer and closer together, the virus could be more lethal and be rewarded by passing from a dead animal to more animals. I think that might be what's happening with the pigs here. We are farming them more intensively than these other animals. So if they can aggressively burrow through different organs, they can just be more widespread in these animals and then spread throughout the world more effectively than perhaps in the past when they didn't kill these animals, if that was the case. Just a thought I wanted to share. So now in addition to the ethical reasons to not be eating animals, the environmental reasons to not be eating animals, and then you have your chronic health disease, and then just more and more zoonotic diseases that it's like, can we just stop? No, let's just stop exploiting animals and stop getting these diseases. <laughs> So yeah, the list of reasons to be vegan just keeps growing like a tapeworm inside of your brain. So let's do whatever we can to make sure this evil zombie string does not lead to more cases of brain holes. Which as Dr. Frunch says, involves things like hand washing and hygiene. So how can we prevent this problem? Good hand washing, hygiene, and treating patients with active intestinal tapeworms can drastically reduce the number of new cases per year. But she left out one of the huge points that like pretty much every public health agency mentions, which is of course, don't be eating raw or undercooked pork. It can be intense. I mean, this Chinese man after eating undercooked pork hot pot had 700 worms in his brain, my God. So uh, let me know down below what you think about all this. Thanks for coming on this sort of gross journey with me, but I thought this case study was just super interesting and I wanted to share it with you guys. So feel free to like and subscribe and all that good stuff and I'll see you in the next one.